Good evening, FTA. Welcome to our online prayer service. Let us pray before we spend some time worshipping and praising our God. Our dear God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy extended to us and for loving us despite the fact we have been unfaithful to you at times and yet you never leave us nor forsake us. Help us, Holy Spirit, even as we seek the face of our Heavenly Father in prayer, in supplication, and in intercession for ourselves, our families, our workplace, our communities, and our nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening, Church. Welcome to our prayer service once again. Tonight, even as we prepare our hearts to pray, just want to invite you to join us, even as we worship Him, even as we lift up His name on high, then let's just pray that God will begin to move, even as we come together and lift His name on high. Amen. Let's just sing this song. Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the ocean roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ the risen one Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the Saving One And we can see that God, you're moving A mighty river through the nation When young and old will turn to Jesus Fling wide you heavenly gates Prepare the way Bring 
watch a movie A mighty river through the nation When young and old will turn to Jesus Fling wide you heavenly gates Prepare the way of the risen Lord Even as we sing this pre-chorus again Let's just make it as our prayer that we want to see God move in this nation. Whatever we are going through, whatever this nation is going through, only God can do it. Nothing is impossible for God. So let's just ask God to move, to move even as we sing this again. Tonight, we are reading from Psalm 119, verse 25 to 32, the fourth Hebrew alphabet, Daleth. Let's read from verse 25, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. From verse 29, Remove me from me the way of lying and grant me your law graciously. I have chosen chosen the way of truth, your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies. O oh Lord, do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's look at a few verses in which I will show the condition of the psalmist as he wrote this, this portion of Psalm 119. First, it is verse 25. It says this, My soul clings to the dust. Then, in verse 28, My soul melts from heaviness. And finally, verse 31, O Lord, do not put me to shame. Now, this is, these are languages of someone who is going through a very, very dark time. When I talk about his soul clings to the dust, it basically has reached a point of deep, I will rest, reckon, deep depression. And his soul melts also from heaviness. And then he asked the Lord, O oh Lord, he cried out in verse 31, Do not put me to shame. So he has gone, he's going through, he was going through a very dark and perhaps depressive moment of his life. 
in which he felt a shame, regret maybe, a lot of heaviness, and he felt like uh, he has gone or hit rock bottom. Let's see what he did in order to come out of these dark moments of his life or depression. Verse 25b, he says, Revive me according to your word. And then in verse 26, he says, I've declared my ways and you answered me. They should be your statutes. So in verse 26, he's basically uh, been very transparent and ventilate to God. Basically, once you, uh, someone who have reached and hit rock bottom, nothing is hidden from God. Not only that, he will be, if he open himself up and tell God exactly how he felt and uh, his, the ways that he have taken, he will see breakthrough. And that's why he asked God, teach me your statutes. Then in verse 27, it says, make me understand the ways of your precepts, so I shall meditate on your wonderful work. So it's not only declare to God and be transparent of how he feel, what he has done, but he also asked God to make him understand the way of his of God's precepts because precepts are basically prescribed ways of life God has given to each and every one of us so that it will bring life and life abundantly. That's why he says, so <clears throat> shall I meditate on your wonderful works. Then in verse 28, as he uh, expressed how his soul felt melts from heaviness, he asked God, strengthen me according to your word. Yeah, he basically cried to God to bring strength to his heavy soul, to his broken down soul, to his uh, soul that is so beaten down, basically to the dust. Then in verse 29, he asked God to remove from him the way of lying. Remember, we talk about he has declared his way before God. And so now, as God answered him and showed some of the, of the way of his way, because remember, God says, My ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. And therefore, as God answered him, showed him his, his way of lying, then he asked God to grant to him his law graciously. Then in verse 30, he says, I've chosen the way of truth because before that, he could have lived a life that brought to this state of depression and in which he hit uh, rock bottom because he has lived the way of lying. But now in verse 30, he said to God, I've chosen now the way of truth. Your judgments I've laid before me. Because before he moved on, he has realized God's judgment is fair and yet is good and is loving. And when God we are dis when we are disciplined by God, as the Hebrew writer says, is because he loves us as a as his heavenly father. Then in verse 21 he says, I cling to your testimony. O oh Lord, do not put me to shame. Basically, as he clung on to this testimony because all hopes are lost and therefore he had no other choice. He clung on to God's testimony for his grace and his mercy are new every morning. Then in verse 32, he told God this, I will run the course of your commandment. So it's very important, no? Uh, we, it must be full-hearted. Like Jesus said, if, uh, if when we choose to follow him and we have put the head, uh, our hand onto the plow, we cannot look back. No hard-heartedness. Fullness and total surrender. And what will happen as the psalmist experience? For you shall enlarge my heart. So, 
he saw uh, from the beginning of this passage a negative, depressive, as well as the darkest moment of his life. In verse 32, he, he asked God to enlarge his heart. Remember the Bible says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bone. And so, as he uh, reflect on what the ways of God, the ways in which God uh, show himself through the word, his perspective changed, his outlook in life changed. And that's why he says in verse 32b, you shall enlarge my heart. And may we learn from the psalmist on this. So in summary, what can we learn from this passage of Psalm 119? In the darkest moment of our lives, let us learn from this psalmist to one, ventilate to God about how we feel. You know, sometimes we ventilate to others, they get a shock, and then they give us all kinds of advice that sounded like Job's free friend in the end, we feel like giving up. So it's better to ventilate to God about how we feel. Second, be honest and transparent with God, like the psalmist. Strip himself basically naked and expose his vulnerability to God. Because God knows us. You know, when God asks Adam, where are you? Do you think God don't know? When God asks us a question, it's basically to help us see our own state and acknowledge when uh, our ways have really destroyed us. And know that he hears us even though he seems so distant and we don't feel his loving presence. Then saturate and strengthen our inner self with his word and get to know him from his written word. See Romans 10, 17, which is basically, it says this, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now, during this uh, COVID-19 lockdown, many people go through depression. And by the way, all of us are not spared, including myself. There are moments in my life I feel very depressed, very uh, uh, feel as though I've hit rock bottom. It was the darkest moment of my life. But I learned one thing, like the psalmist. I learn to saturate myself with the Word of God. So sometimes people say, why you read so many chapters a day? I say, because my, my, my spirit is very weak. You know? So in all, when I know that I'm fearful, I'm frightened, I'm negative thinking, I get into depression, I need to feed my spirit with the Word of God. And only, only then I can overcome what is ahead of me, the fear, the panic attack, the depression, you know. Uh, and every time I find, even reading through the Bible, including the boring passage, somehow or another, after reading chapters after chapters, the life of the Spirit of Christ start building me up. And so, we press on faithfully. He will come at the right time to, uh, to what I would say, to help us overcome our seemingly hopeless situation. The devil will lie to us. We will be, uh, that's the reason why before I learned how to saturate myself in the word. Last time he said that I feel depressed when things are uh, uh, not going well, and I feel so shameful of the things, the mistake I've done, the devil start attacking me, uh, bombarding my mind with negative thoughts. Previously, I would just slouch myself and watch TV, and uh, including cartoon show, trying to uh, build myself uh, to positive thinking. All that didn't work. But as I saturate myself with his word, let me tell you, it works because Jesus said that he was tempted by the devil in Matthew 4.4. 4. 
You know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed, not just a few words, every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Let's pray. Our dear God and Heavenly Father, you who is who are our, not only our creator, but you love us. You know our very being. You know our basically our DNA, our spiritual structure, our soul structure, and our body, which you have given to us. Help us, Lord, to continue to look at your written word. It contains words of life. It contains words that will build us up, words that will give us faith to trust you and you alone. Jesus, you've said in this world, we will have trials and tribulation. Indeed, it is very true. There will be storms, but you have told us we need to build the, our house on the rock. Teach us, O oh Lord, to continue to find strength through your word and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and guide us through his still small voice. May you comfort my brothers and sisters. Some of them, I know some of you, are going through very dark moments now. I pray that you will reach out to God. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't listen to the lies of the evil one. Allow, though initially you may find it very boring to read the word, but I, I tell you, as you press on, faithfully, each time, little by little, as the Malay proverb says, Sadikit, Sadikit, Lama, Lama, Jadibukit. So little by little, you will find strength and hope in Christ alone. So Father, I thank you for your love, for your loving presence in each of my brothers and sisters, wherever they are listening to this uh, recording. In Jesus' name, I pray. So now we will spend time praying for our nation, for what is happening around us. May God bless you. Amen.
Thank you.
Thank you.